the windows of heaven open, and then it rains constantly for 40 days and 40 nights. Water from everywhere, from above, from below, covering the entire face of the earth. Archangel Michael, respected in many religions, fights against Lucifer in battles of good versus evil. He has healing powers and performs heroic deeds, leading to shrines being built in his honor around the world. Michael's teachings guide followers to spiritual places. In Islam, he is known for his kindness to all creatures. What happened during the Battle of the Holy Figures? Join us as we uncover the thrilling story of Michael, Lucifer, and Azazel's dramatic clash in biblical history. The Archangel Michael holds a very important place in many different religions around the world, like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and the Baha'i Faith. People look up to him as a strong protector, a healer who can cure sickness, and as a leader among angels. Michael is often pictured as the top general of the angels in heaven, leading the fight against evil forces. One of the biggest enemies he fights against is Satan. This story of Michael's bravery and leadership in battle is shared in sacred writings, including the Book of Revelation and the Epistle of Jude. In these stories, he is shown leading God's army to a triumphant win over evil. Besides being known as a fearless fighter, Michael is also famous for his ability to heal the sick. There are many historical stories about his healing miracles. For example, he is said to have stopped a deadly disease in Rome after Pope St. Gregory the Great prayed to him. To honor his healing gifts, people built special places like the Michaelian Sanctuary and a healing water spring called Cherotopa. These stories emphasize Michael's important role, not just in defending people in battle, but also in looking after their health. Michael is also respected for showing up in visions to help and guide those who believe in him. For example, there's a story from Cornwall, UK, about Michael appearing to some fishermen. In Italy, he's remembered for showing up at Monte Gargano, a place that has become a very important spot for pilgrims to visit. His miraculous appearances are believed to have inspired the creation of holy places like Mont Saint-Michel in France. These stories and places remind us of how Michael's spirit and influence continue to be felt in the world, not just in the past, but also today. Michael, also known as Mikhail, is one of the top four angels in Islam. He has a big job. He makes sure people and their souls get what they need to stay healthy and happy. He also looks after the natural world. Michael is known as the angel who shows a lot of kindness, which shows he cares a lot about everyone and everything. People have been talking about Archangel Michael for a long time in stories and pictures. He is often shown as a strong hero who fights for what is right. In old paintings from the Middle Ages and in famous stories like Paradise Lost by John Milton, Michael is seen with a powerful sword given to him by God. This sword is a sign of his power and his role as a leader in the fight against bad things. Let's dive deeper into the stories about Michael and another figure named Azazel. We'll talk about what they mean to different religions, the symbols they represent, and the lessons we can learn from them. These stories are not just old tales. They teach us about bravery, kindness, and fighting for what is good. They help us understand the roles these beings play in our world and beyond, showing us the many ways they touch our lives and guide us. Through exploring their stories, we can see the deep impact they have on faith, culture, and how we see the difference between right and wrong. Michael plays a very important role during the Last Judgment, more than just being an ordinary angel. He has the big job of weighing people's souls to decide what happens to them after they die. This job is really important because it decides if people will have a good or bad future after death. Michael is treated with a lot of respect and admiration in different religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. People see him not just as any angel, but as a powerful guardian. This respect from so many different beliefs shows how special and important he is to many people. Michael is often shown as a fighter, which tells us about his bravery and how determined he is to fight against bad things. He is a leader among the angels who are organized in different levels and groups, each with their own jobs. Michael being a leader shows he is very brave, loyal, and fair. These good qualities are important because they guide and protect people who believe in him. He is like a symbol of power and doing the right thing, leading people to be good. On the other side, Azazel is a character that makes us think a lot because his story is about beauty, skill, standing up for what he believes in, and trying to make things right again. Azazel was known for being really good at fighting and making things, showing both the ability to create beautiful things and the power to destroy. 
Before he made mistakes, he was seen as a wonderful being who added beauty and order to heaven with his skills and bravery. But his story changes when he decides to stand against the rules of heaven. This part of his story is a strong lesson about what happens when you challenge authority and the chance to fix things. Izazel's story makes us think about how there is a thin line between creating something amazing and causing a lot of harm if those creations are not used right. His journey through conflict and trying to be forgiven teaches us about the complicated fight between good and bad. It reminds us that the choices we make are important and have big effects. Azazel is super talented in crafting things and battling, but his tale is quite a sad one due to some major blunders he made. This aspect makes him a fascinating character when diving into ancient religious narratives. He embodies the concept of being both magnificent and perilous at once. He serves as a cautionary figure about the dangers of excessive pride and ignoring advice from others. However, Azazel's narrative doesn't stop at his failures. It also explores the possibility of redemption and making amends. This offers a glimmer of hope that individuals who have strayed off the right path might find their way back if they genuinely regret their actions and strive to correct them. Observing Azazel alongside Michael reveals two starkly contrasting journeys. Michael is the epitome of righteousness, always upholding the well-being of others and adhering to the celestial laws. Azazel, in contrast, opted to ignore guidance, landing himself in trouble. Despite this, he holds on to the desire to rectify his errors. Their stories serve as moral lessons within a grand collection of mythological tales, delineating the boundaries of right and wrong. These narratives encourage us to reflect on our decisions and the lessons we can draw from them. Michael represents the virtues of assistance and compliance with rules, while Azazel embodies the hope for rehabilitation after missteps. Together, they contribute rich and thought-provoking themes to the lore surrounding deities and heroes, prompting us to ponder over our moral improvement. Lucifer, often portrayed as the most stunning and intelligent angel, was initially flawless, created by God himself. Positioned as a high-ranking guardian cherub, he dwelled in God's sacred mountain, roaming among fiery stones. Adorned with every precious gem, his appearance reflected his lofty status and allure. However, Lucifer's vanity, fueled by his attractiveness, led him to misuse his intellect for personal glory. His dealings and wrongdoings filled him with malice and he transgressed against God. This resulted in his expulsion from the divine mountain as a desecrated entity. Consequently, Lucifer was stripped of his heavenly abode and authority, eventually becoming Satan, the antagonist. The biblical narrative describes a celestial conflict where Michael and his angels clashed with the dragon, Satan, and his minions. Despite their endeavors, Satan and his cohorts were overwhelmed and ejected from heaven to earth. This event marked the commencement of Satan's malevolent influence over humanity, misleading the masses. A third of the angels, persuaded by Satan's revolt, faced expulsion from heaven, underscoring the magnitude of his sway and the gravity of the dispute. We're about to see how Lucifer's pride turned into his biggest mistake, shaking up heaven itself. The story of Lucifer's fall from grace is a tale of pride, ambition, and rebellion, deeply rooted in Judeo-Christian theology. Lucifer, once a magnificent angel known for his beauty and wisdom, became enamored with his own splendor. This pride led him to aspire to a position above God, which ultimately resulted in his downfall. His heart, filled with pride due to his beauty and intelligence, led to corruption, and he was cast out of heaven to the earth as a form of divine judgment. The narrative of Lucifer's rebellion and the subsequent war in heaven is complex and multifaceted, with interpretations varying across different religious and theological traditions. For instance, the LDS Church views the war in heaven as an actual event in the pre-mortal existence, where Lucifer, rebelling against God's plan of salvation, was cast out along with his followers. Meanwhile, the Catholic perspective emphasizes Lucifer's rebellion as an act of insanity, given his knowledge of God, highlighting the sin of pride and refusal to worship God incarnate as pivotal factors in his fall. Lucifer's narrative, deeply intertwined with themes of ambition, pride, and rebellion, has been a focal point of theological and literary explorations throughout history. The character of Lucifer, often equated with Satan in Christian theology, originates from Latin Lucifer, meaning light bringer or morning star, a term that once described the planet Venus heralding the dawn. 
This celestial imagery is reflected in various cultures, where dawn deities such as the Vedic goddess Ushas, the Lithuanian goddess Austrine, and the Greek goddess Eos embody similar characteristics of renewal and light. These mythologies underline the shared Proto-Indo-European heritage, emphasizing the dawn as a universal symbol of hope and rebirth. In Christian theology, the narrative of Lucifer has evolved significantly. Originally depicted as a brilliant angel named Morning Star, Lucifer's pride led to his downfall transforming him into Satan, the adversary of God and humanity. This transformation is a cautionary tale against hubris and disobedience, encapsulating the eternal struggle between light and darkness, humility and arrogance. Intriguingly, the name Morningstar also refers to Jesus Christ in the New Testament, symbolizing victory and divine guidance, which contrasts sharply with the figure of Lucifer, highlighting themes of redemption and the triumph of good over evil. Beyond Christian traditions, pagan and contemporary interpretations of Lucifer diverge from the narrative of a fallen angel. In many pagan traditions, Lucifer or similar figures represent wisdom, enlightenment, and the challenging of established norms. These interpretations celebrate the quest for knowledge and personal growth, viewing Lucifer as a symbol of resistance against tyranny and an advocate for self-determination. This positive reimagining in modern paganism emphasizes Lucifer's role as a liberator from ignorance, underscoring the complexity of his character across different cultures and belief systems. Literature has played a pivotal role in reshaping Lucifer's image, with works like John Milton's Paradise Lost portraying him as a tragic hero, whose quest for freedom and autonomy against divine authority offers a nuanced view of his rebellion. This literary portrayal has influenced contemporary views on Lucifer, inspiring interpretations that focus on themes of enlightenment and resistance against oppression rather than purely evil incarnations. Such depictions have permeated music, art, and popular media, reflecting a broader cultural fascination with the figure of Lucifer as a symbol of complexity, struggle, and the human condition. The evolution of Lucifer's portrayal from a celestial morning star to a symbol of ultimate rebellion and fall from grace, and then to a multifaceted character embodying themes of knowledge, enlightenment, and resistance, reflects the dynamic interplay between religious doctrine, cultural narratives, and human psychology. This complexity invites continued exploration and reinterpretation, making Lucifer's story a rich source of philosophical and theological inquiry, as well as artistic inspiration. Mount Hermon, a majestic peak that stands as the highest mountain in the region, reaching up to 9,032 feet above sea level, has a rich tapestry of geographical, historical, and mythological significance. Straddling the border between Lebanon and Syria, with parts of its southern slopes in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, this mountain is a natural wonder that has captivated humans for millennia. Its snow-capped summit, visible from over 60 miles away, has earned it various names, including Jebel al-Sheikh, or the Chieftain Mountain by Arabs, reflecting its imposing presence. Geographically, Mount Hermon is part of the anti-Lebanon mountain range and serves as a crucial water source for the region. Its high altitude and the precipitation it captures are vital in a predominantly arid area, feeding the headstreams of the Jordan River and nurturing a diverse flora on its slopes. This natural abundance has made Mount Hermon a contender tested resource throughout history, with its strategic and economic value being recognized by the nations surrounding it. The mountain's religious and mythological significance is profound and varied. It has been a sacred landmark since the Bronze Age, serving as the northwestern limit of Israelite conquest under Moses and Joshua, and is associated with gods and legends across different cultures. For the ancient Ugaritic religion, it was known as Saphon, where the palace of the god Baal was located. The Hebrew Bible and Apocrypha depict Mount Hermon as the place where the watcher class of fallen angels descended to earth, further embedding it in the spiritual landscape of the region. Next, we dive into the aftermath of Lucifer's bold move and the battle it sparked in the skies. Let's take a closer look at the story of Lucifer being kicked out of heaven, making it easier to understand and adding more details. This story is very important to many religions and has influenced a lot of our culture, including stories, art, and how we see right and wrong. Lucifer, who was also called the Morning Star, was one of the most beautiful and admired angels in heaven. He was so bright and beautiful, filled with wisdom and charm. As a guardian cherub, he had a very important job and was very close to God. But his beauty and high position made him too proud. He started wanting the same love and praise that everyone gave to God. Lucifer didn't just want to be as important as God, he wanted to be more important. 
This feeling of wanting more than he should have was the first wrong choice made against God's rules and was how sin first started. The Bible tells us about Lucifer's thoughts and how he ended up falling from heaven. It uses beautiful poetry and images, especially in books like Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Even though these parts were first about human kings, many people think they also tell us about Lucifer's story. He didn't just want people to notice him, he wanted to take God's place and rule over heaven and earth. This dream showed he was very arrogant and didn't want to follow the rules. Lucifer's story is a powerful example of how wanting too much power and not being thankful for what we have can lead to our downfall. It's a reminder that pride and rebellion against what is right can cause a lot of harm. This tale not only teaches us about the beginnings of sin, but also helps us understand the ongoing struggle between good and evil that we hear about in so many stories and see in art throughout history. By looking at Lucifer's journey, we can learn valuable lessons about humility, the dangers of pride, and the importance of respecting the natural order and the roles we are given. Lucifer's fight against God wasn't done alone. He convinced many angels to take his side and fight against God, leading to a huge battle in heaven. In the end, Lucifer and his supporters lost and were thrown out. They changed from angels of light to fallen angels, with Lucifer turning into Satan, the enemy. This change shows a big drop in their spiritual and moral status going from respected to shamed because they were too proud and didn't listen. Lucifer's mistake didn't just affect him and his group. It brought sin into the world, changing how people relate to God and each other. This story warns us about the dangers of being too proud and going against what's right. It teaches that thinking too highly of ourselves and defying the natural order can lead to trouble. This story has influenced many people over the years, including artists, writers, and musicians. It's been used in books, art, and songs to show the fight between good and evil, light and dark. The tale of Lucifer's fall is a powerful reminder of what can go wrong when we let pride take over and go against better judgment. It's a lesson about the importance of humility and following the right path, showing us the bad things that can happen when we ignore these values. To wrap things up, the tale about how Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, turned into Satan, and how that changed things for people is not simple at all. It does a bunch of things at once. It tries to explain where bad stuff comes from, warns us to not get too full of ourselves or fight against authority, and gives artists and storytellers lots of symbols and ideas to play with. It shows how humans have always struggled with being too proud and how there's always a fight between what's right and what's wrong, both inside us and in the world around us. When Satan got the boot from heaven, it wasn't just a big deal for him, but it messed things up for people in the whole world. Him not listening to God brought bad stuff into the world, which led to people dying both in their bodies and spirits. The cool friendship that people and God had at the start got broken, and it was only through what Jesus did later that there could be a fix. Satan was once this super good-looking and strong angel, covered in shiny jewels and might have had a really important job, kind of like a priest. But he got too big for his boots, thought he could do a better job than God, and tried to take over. This move of getting too proud and trying to beat God was what got him kicked to earth and started his plan to lead people the wrong way. Right after everything went south, things got really tough for people. Being cut off from God meant living with bad stuff like dying, having to work hard, and not getting along with each other. But even with all this bad news, the Bible tells us there's still hope. Jesus beat the bad stuff that came from what went down and offers a way back to a good place in never-ending life for anyone who's in. A long time ago, the earth was not a nice place. People forgot how to be kind to each other. They were doing bad things all the time, which made the world a sad and dark place to live in. This made God very upset because he wanted the world to be full of love and kindness, not hate and meanness. Among all these people, there was one man who was different. His name was Noah. Noah was a good man who always tried to do what was right. He was kind to others and took care of the world around him. God saw that Noah was a kind and just man in a world that had turned its back on those values. God decided that the only way to fix the world was to start all over again. This meant he had to remove everything that was bad, including the people who were making poor choices, except for Noah, his family, and the animals. God had a big plan, and he chose Noah to help carry it out. I'm the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth. Is it you? Yes, it's me, Noah. We haven't much time. Mankind has turned wicked. God told Noah about his plan to send a flood that would cover the whole earth. This flood would wash away everything bad, but God wanted to save Noah, his family, and the animals because they were good. God made a promise to Noah that he and his family would be safe from the flood. To keep this promise, God gave Noah detailed instructions. He told Noah to build a huge boat called an ark. This ark was not like any other boat. 
It was so big that it could hold two of every kind of animal, plus Noah and his family. The ark was to be made out of a special wood known as gopher wood. Noah was also told to cover the ark with pitch, a sticky substance like tar, on the inside and outside. Noah. Oh, my lord. Make you an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall you make in the ark. This was to make sure that the ark was waterproof and could float on the water without sinking. Building the ark was a huge task. Imagine trying to build something so big without any of the tools or machines we have today. Noah had to do everything by hand, which took a lot of work and time. But Noah believed in God's promise and followed his instructions exactly. Think about the animals coming to the ark. Noah had to gather two of every kind, which means he had to find and care for a vast variety of animals. This was an enormous responsibility, as he had to ensure there were enough supplies to feed and take care of all these animals during the flood. While Noah was building the ark, the people around him didn't understand what he was doing. They continued to live their lives as before, ignoring Noah's warnings and the signs that something big was about to happen. But Noah kept on working, focused on completing the ark to save his family and the animals. The story of Noah and the ark teaches us about the importance of being good and kind, even when no one else is. It shows us that doing what's right can sometimes be hard work, but it's always worth it in the end. Noah's dedication to following God's instructions, despite the challenges, is a powerful example of faith and obedience. This tale is not just about destruction, it's also about starting over and making things better. It's a reminder that it's never too late to change and that there's always hope for a better future. Through Noah's story, we learn valuable lessons about caring for the world and each other and the power of sticking to our principles even when faced with difficult tasks. Noah worked hard and followed all of God's instructions exactly. This showed that Noah really trusted God. He had faith, which means he believed in God even though he hadn't seen the flood yet. When the ark was ready, Noah, his family, and the animals went inside. Then the rain started, and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The flood was so big that it covered everything, even the mountains. But Noah and everyone on the ark were safe. God had kept his promise to save them. The story isn't just about destruction, it's also about starting over in hope. After the flood, God made a new promise, a covenant with Noah. God promised never to destroy the earth with a flood again. This promise was a sign of God's mercy. He wanted to give people another chance. The story of Noah and the ark is a simple but powerful lesson that teaches us about right and wrong and how our choices can affect everything around us. It's about being good and doing the right thing like Noah and shows us that God is willing to forgive us and give us a new start. This story has been shared for thousands of years and reminds us that even in tough times, there is always hope for beginning again. The story of the flood found in the Bible describes how God decided to clean up the world's wickedness by causing a big flood. However, God chose to save Noah, his family, and various animals because Noah was a good person. This tale encourages us to reflect on our mistakes, understand God's judgment, and see opportunities for correction and new beginnings. The ark Noah built is not just a ship. It represents God's care, a promise of safety, and the hope for a new beginning. After the water went away, the way animals behaved around people changed, which shows that what we do can influence the natural world. It was also a period when God made a new promise to Noah and all creatures. The rainbow became a symbol of this promise, assuring that such a devastating flood would never happen again. The flood narrative is similar to flood tales in other traditions, like the Epic of Gilgamesh from ancient Mesopotamia. This similarity indicates that stories about great floods and the opportunity to start afresh are common themes shared by different cultures and historical periods. These stories highlight universal themes of destruction and rebirth. What's your favorite story of overcoming challenges? Share below and remember to like and subscribe.